Now we go back to drawing more complex and advanced objects using the technical method with a bit of a free hand and eye sighting. So let's draw some wooden toys. The reason why I'm starting with wooden toys is because they are the next logical step to go after advanced geometrical random shapes that we did before, due to their simple construction of basic shapes put together to resemble real life vehicles. So we are not going far ahead in the progression scale, we are still taking it a bit slow and increasing the difficulty scale bit by bit. So let's see how hard this will be. In the first example we have this little train locomotive. If we look at it we see that it's made of a cylinder on top of a box for the body. A little smooth half circle for the carriage, four wheels and a couple of add-ons like the chimney on top. So most of these objects are basic shapes glued together to create this vehicle. So let's first start with the bounding box. By the way we could draw the projection plans first like we did in previous lessons. But let's just go ahead and make that step mentally instead of drawing it. But in a real world situation, you won't be drawing projections for every object you want to draw. You make the whole process we discussed earlier mentally when you study an object you want to draw. Now, there are a couple of ways to draw this in perspective. You can freehand it using fine lines like we did before. You can draw the projection plans and draw the 3D object from it. You can draw a section of it from the top and side and use the center line to draw it from both sides. We will explore all these options later on with complex objects. But for now, let's draw it like we did before in previous lessons using the vanishing points, perspective lines, and bounding box, as in the technical method. So let's start with the bounding box. How big should it be? Of course, I won't be able to measure it without dividing it into units and replicating it to the bounding box. But let's just guesstimate it here, knowing that it's longer in the side view than the front view. And you need a bit of height for the chimney. Next, I will start with the bottom platform, since it's the widest and longest part of the toy. I can only guesstimate how long or how tall it is here, so it's mostly eyeballing it, but as long as we keep the proportion of the whole toy right, it won't be that wrong. So let's draw the main platform making sure it's above the ground, making sure that there is space enough for the wheels to be there, and measure it mentally in relation to the top of the train. Now to draw the back carriage, I calculate how far it is in the back in relation to the platform, and it seems like it's almost in the third part of the vehicle. It's not on the edge of the platform, it's a bit recessed internally. So I draw its bounding box. Since it's almost like half a circle, we can find the center of the box and try to draw the ellipse or the half circle in the front and extrude it toward the back. It will be tricky to freehand an ellipse right away, but the more you practice it, the easier it will get. Next, I will draw the cylinder by drawing its bounding box first, which will fit inside the back carriage. It will go all the way to the front, but not to the edge. It's a bit shorter. Once I draw the starting ellipse of the cylinder, I can then extrude the bounding box and draw the other end of the cylinder there. Let's clean up the lines since they are getting a bit busy and draw what we got so far.
the main body, the main cylinder, and the back carriage. All the main parts are done. Let's now do the secondary objects like the wheels. The wheels are basically a cylinder, so we can draw the bounding box for it and then draw the ellipses in afterward. I made the ellipse a bit bigger since the wheels are bigger than the platform. Finally I connect in between them and we get the first wheel. I will do the same for the other wheel as well. Now let's do the chimney. The chimney is a cone upside down. So let's start with the bottom ellipse and expand it upward. Instead of doing all the calculations, I decided to freehand all the remaining parts. This is the upcoming part of perspective drawing. We're going to talk about freehanding most of your drawing based on the knowledge we have so far in perspective, just like we did in the previous lesson. You will get mostly the same results much faster in freehand, but only after you practice perspective in the traditional way for a long time. This way your drawing won't be done in a random way. So here you have the chimney and the cylinder behind it done in a few seconds, as if it was done with all the measurements. The same is done for the back wheel, but with half using perspective lines and half freehanding it. So it's possible to do a mix of both techniques, but if you are starting to draw in perspective, you should always do it in a traditional way. I also add all the extra details using a mix of both, finding the center by using the diagonals, and then adding the extra detail using freehand. Now that we have the whole toy drawn down, I can now go around on a new layer and add a cleaner and a clearer line weight for the whole toy. I'm observing the reference here to make sure all my details are correct and add any extra details I may have missed in the initial sketch. Always rotate your canvas whenever you draw an ellipse or a circle to help you draw a cleaner line. You can also use the pen tool or the marquee ellipse to draw much cleaner lines than the one I have right here using freehand. Now that it's almost done, I will go around the sketch and then take a line weight all around and any less details I may find in the reference photo.
Finally, I add simple values just to make sure it look more presentable. And it's done. It's not the same angle at the reference photo or the exact size, but side by side you can tell that it's the same torque. I can give it more time and fine tune it a bit more, but we have lots of examples to cover. So 20 minutes or so is good for now. Let's move on to the second example. This next vehicle is a truck hauling wood, all done in basic shapes. Couple of boxes and cylinders. First I decide what the bounding box will be. The lower it is, the more distorted it will be, and the more top side we will see. And of course the higher it is, and the closer it is to the horizon line, the less we will see from the top and the bottom sides. So looking at the reference, I decided how much of the top we will see, just like we do in the reference photo, and draw my bounding box there. Again, the length is around twice or so in size versus the width, and the same size for the height. I'm trying to make sure that the ratio aspect of the bounding box is the right size in comparison to the reference photo. Next I draw the cabin box, which is more of a cube, recess inside the main body. Seeing how the box top is narrow, I think I should have drawn the truck a bit lower in perspective. But it's okay, we are drawing another version of the truck here. The final part of the body is the platform in the back, that's holding the logs, which is another thin box that goes outside of the main body limit. Once I have the box, I can now start smoothing out the edges of all the boxes. Since these are kids toy, all the angles will be rounded up, no sharp edges here. I do the smoothing up in freehand since I already practiced it doing the usual calculations we did before, in previous lessons. I will also smooth the main body and the cabin as well, and draw both of them with better line weight. Now that we are done with the body, let's draw the wheels now. As before, the wheels are cylinders, so let's draw the surrounding box, then draw the ellipses inside of it. After drawing the first rectangle, I copy it and decided to fit the end of the wheel and check back with the vanishing point, just to make sure it's in the right position. Once I have drawn the bounding box, I can copy it to the other wheel and make sure it's in a correct angle by using the vanishing point to make sure it's correct. I will do the same for the wheel on the other side by connecting the bounding box to the opposite vanishing point. Once I have all the bounding boxes for the wheels, I can now draw the ellipses for all of them to turn them into wheels.
final point is the wood logs and the pillars holding them on the side. I do the measurements mentally here to draw the equal location for both pillars. Next I draw the cylinder in their place by drawing the initial base and then copy it for the top of the cylinder. I'm trying to eyeball the correct location in regards to the height of my drawing. The reference truck is a bit higher than mine, so I have to adjust the pillars accordingly. Once I have the pillars done, time to draw the logs. I draw the bounding box for the logs first to limit where the logs will be. I try first to divide the box into equal parts but it's getting a bit too complicated so let's just divide the bottom edge into three equal parts for the base logs and then we can do the same with So we have 9 rectangles on the side. Now we can draw 3 ellipses in the bottom, 2 in the middle, and 1 in the top. From there we can extrude these ellipses back into the vanishing point to get the cylinders. Now I draw the first log in the top and find the back side of it. Then I draw the back side ellipse and finish up the first log. I can simply copy the same log downward and modify it to fit in the bounding box we just made before. Same for the one in the bottom. The other logs will not show as much, just the front end of it. I just need to make sure the logs are in the correct perspective. I can do all the calculations here and get it exactly right, but we can cheat a bit and just copy one version all around and make sure they fit in the bounding box we made. The rest of the logs will be hidden behind the cabin, so they won't show up here. Now that I have the whole thing drawn down, I can add a new layer and draw the final line weight on top. You can zoom in for the tricky details and rotate the canvas when you draw ellipses and circles to get better handle on the curves.
The final part is optional, adding values all around to make it look closer to the reference photo. And it's done, took around 30 minutes or so, and we get very close to the reference image, even if it was in a different perspective angle. Let's draw one more truck, but with more details than the ones before. Let's study the truck first. We need not to look at the details of the truck, but the basic shapes that it's made of. We have a thin box for the bottom platform, a box for the cabin, a hollow box for the back loader, and a pentagon for the hood. So we can start drawing these basic boxes and then add the details later on. Once I have the same viewpoint, I can start drawing the bounding box for the truck, estimating the width, length, and height. The back box of the truck starts approximately about halfway in the height and halfway in length as well. So let's draw the box there. Once I have one side of the box, I can connect it to the vanishing point to get the other sides. Next, I leave a little gap between the back loader and the platform on the bottom, and then start drawing the bottom base of the truck. Again, we don't have wheel units here to follow, so you just have to guess the distance in between, making sure the relation between the truck components look right. I'm also not bothered by any details now, just drawing the bounding boxes for now. Next I add a box for the cabin. Now that I drawn the cabin, the base platform seems a bit short, so let's extend the base a little bit more. Then I start drawing the hood by drawing a rectangle and then finding the center of it and then adding the fifth point of the pentagon on top. Finally, I extrude the shape backward to get the hood shape down. Now things are starting to look busy with all these lines, so let's draw what we got so far and hide the rest of the lines. A 
Okay, we have the main body now of the truck. Hold on. Let's start adding some details like the top ceiling of the cabin with smooth edges. Next, I start sculpting the cabin doors out of the big box. Then we complete freehand drawing to get the doors. Since we have the bounding box in place, the doors won't be overdone or misplaced since they have to be done inside of the bounding box. Once I have one side ready, I move on to the other side and draw the second door. I drew some guidelines for the angle in the center, so I make sure that even with freehand drawing, it's still following the same perspective rules. I do the same for the pillar at the edge of the door and do it on the other side as well. Next, I add some details for the hood of the truck. Now moving on to the back, we have a little box in between the loader and the platform, and another one behind it. So let's draw them. Let's move on to the wheels, drawing the bounding box first and then turning them into cylinders, like we did before. Let's also draw the headlights, which are tapered cylinders in the back, so we can use the guidelines first and then freehand the shape afterwards. I can freehand the wheels for now, and then redraw them in the final draft with accurate details. The wheels on the other side won't be visible in this angle, so we can call it done for now. All is left now is to add the final line weight with more accurate lines. I try to round out most of the corners here since this is a sharp toy as I said before and there won't be any real hard edges anywhere. Take your time in this stage and make sure the lines are solid and confident without many iteration of the same line. Just one confident line for each area. Rotate the canvas whenever you need to draw round shapes and zoom in whenever you need to do tricky details.
Finally, I add some values to make sure it look more presentable at the final step. And it's done. And these are all three tracks side by side done in perspective using the bounding box, technical drawing, and some freehand as well. We went from drawing boxes to drawing advanced shapes to finally starting to see the fruit of our labor and being able to draw actual objects in correct perspective. We also went from 100% technical drawing to using technical drawing and freehand drawing mesh together. This is just a start. We will move on to more and more objects, real scenarios, and real scenes to draw in perspective as we move on. So do a Google search for these wooden toys and draw more of them on your own. This will be a great addition to your daily practice to get the hang of perspective and eyesight drawing as well. The more you practice this, the better you will get. Finally, in the next lesson, we go back to full hand drawing again, but now with more complex shapes like we did in this lesson. So this way we go from technical drawing to a mix between the two like we did in this lesson, and finally to full on freehand drawing complex shapes. So we will do that in the next lesson. As always, if you like this lesson, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. To stay notified for future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.